Thank you so much, Mrs. Sidhat Uspande, for that very informative presentation. For our next talk, we will be learning how to solve a cyber attack using the attacker style reconnaissance. To teach us about this is no other than Cicognito CEO and co founder, Mr. Rob Verziv. Cicognito is known in the industry for empowering companies to have complete control and visual over their attack surface. Mr. Gerziv has led the development of offensive security solutions for both the private sector and intelligence agencies. Prior to founding Cicognito, he was Director of Offensive Security and Head of R&D at C4 Security and the CTO of the Product Department of the 8200 Israeli Intelligence Corporation. If you're looking to solve a problem of external visibility and your external risk profile, this tool is great. I can't point to another one which does as thorough a job of exploring and exposing those assets that you didn't even know you had. It's so valuable to me because it gives me not another problem to solve, it gives me an action plan. And you can't put a price on that. I'm Kevin Keeley. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer here at Scientific Games Corporation, the world's premier manufacturer of slot machines, lottery terminals, lottery tickets, and a whole bunch of other stuff besides. My job is to help the business do business safely. If you don't know what your external attack surface is, chat with Psychognito and see what they can tell you. There have been assets that we would never have discovered in a month of Sundays of trying, and Psychognito has served those up for us on a little platter. We don't have the manpower to go out proactively hunting for these resources either, or these devices, and Psychognito was a fairly small investment in comparison to the cost of responding to even one incident, showing us exactly what we're looking at on the outside, and helping us to prioritize exactly which assets are the most risky and which need to be dealt with. That's a fantastic asset for us. We've grown by a number of seriously large acquisitions over the years. We were always in reactive mode. We could never proactively get ahead of this problem and say, hey, acquisition of an acquisition, you have these issues, take care of them before it becomes a problem for us all. Each individual business unit is individually and separately enabled. We can give access to anybody within those units and then empowering them to go off and proactively seek to reduce their own risk. There's been no competitor that I can point to that's given me the same value and spread and reach and particularly me-focused or scientific games-focused risk management approach as Psychognito does. It's very easily comprehensible. It's something that's very executive friendly. You can actually show it to the board of directors. You can show it to the chairman of the board and people instinctively get it. Gurziv, CEO and co-founder of Psycognito, the leading attack surface protection company. We established Psycognito a few years ago to solve what we see as the number one problem in cybersecurity, which is preventing breaches attributed to unknown and unmanaged uh, assets and attack surfaces. According to Gartner, over 50% of the breaches are attributed to unknown and unmanaged assets. And if you think about that logic, it's quite extreme. It means that you can invest hundreds of millions of dollars in firewalls and endpoint protection security and cloud security, and you might still be breached. In fact, most likely you will be breached if and when. Because of assets, you are not even monitoring despite all of these investments. So that is the problem Psycognito solves with its SaaS platform. Real quick about our background, about a third of our company served for years in the NSA here in the US and in the 8200 unit in Israel. And I actually had the privilege to lead the reconnaissance department of the 8200 uh, unit for a number of years. So we have a very unique perspective on how attackers launch their attacks and how defenders can leverage attackers, technologies and methodologies to defend themselves better. So attackers, by definition, pursue the path of least resistance, meaning 
They're looking for attractive assets and attractive net networks that are exploitable enough that they can exploit within days and weeks versus months and years. And the reality is, and that's the statistics, as I mentioned, according to Gartner, over 50% of the breaches are attributed to unknown and unmanaged assets. And according to ESG and the over 200 security leaders they interviewed, the vast majority of the attacks target assets they don't even know, unknown and unmanaged assets. And 75% of these security leaders said they believe that they will continue to get, to get attacked at unknown and unmanaged assets that, by definition, they cannot protect. So obviously, that becomes the number one problem in our perspective, for sure, in cybersecurity. And there is a basic principle we believe our industry should <laughs> learn more from attackers. So, and, and here it is. If you want to protect anything, be it an army base in Afghanistan or a building in Manhattan or Hong Kong or a company's attack surface, you need two things. You need one, visibility and understanding of what you need to defend and protect. And the second thing you need is security monitoring coverage, meaning even if you know your whole IT ecosystem, but you are really running thorough security testing at 1% of your assets, this plan is going to fail. It might take one day or one year or two years, but it's not going to work because eventually more and more security gaps are accumulating and it's just a question of time until attackers find them. So that's how our industry has been doing this for two, actually 20, 25 years. And in this session, we'll talk about how we can change that as an industry and what you can do today to change your security posture and how you run risk management and, and, and security testing and how you can eliminate 90% of the real cyber risk by leveraging what attackers are seeing and attackers methodologies. So let's for a minute move to the other side of the table and think like attackers. Say you have a target like an ISIS or Al Qaeda, and you need to get access to some <laughs> relevant intelligence. The first thing you would do is trying to understand what is their organization structure, who their affiliates are, what are some IT assets and other things you can quote unquote, interact with, and then figure out what's your path of least resistance into the relevant things from which you can acquire the relevant intelligence. And eventually you will try to target and focus on three or 10 things to do that versus boiling the ocean. So when attackers do that and they target enterprise organizations, they often find things, and these are all breaches we have prevented, our SaaS platform has prevented uh, for our customers. So here, for example, we have a Fortune 500 company, which probably paid millions to these <laughs> gateway provider, which unfortunately misconfigured this gateway in a way that this secure web browsing solution actually allowed attackers to access all of the <laughs> browsing data of that company and get admin privileges into this network and this traffic. In many other cases, we are finding routers and gateways uh, misconfigured or just completely exploitable in a way that allows attackers to completely take over this whole network. And we've seen a Fortune 500 company that processes over $1 trillion in the US 
that did not know some of their networks in London, Hong Kong, and Singapore in a way that uh, made them not test and scan properly some of those networks. And they had uh, Paul's VPNs that were completely exploitable and allowed attackers to become admins in these international networks and get access to the main networks in the US. And these guys have invested probably hundreds of millions of dollars a year in security. And then this is another uh, example I really like, just an interesting story. So a few days after the colonial pipeline breach, we have onboarded this Fortune 100 company uh, where our SaaS platform found this OT network exposure where attackers could have taken over some of these OT uh, systems completely. And this company was actually bigger than Colonial Pipeline. So if attackers can find such exposures and paths of least resistance within, between, I'm sorry, within hours or days, that's not very good. <laughs> and it means that you can literally invest hundreds of millions of dollars in cybersecurity and still be breached and very easily. The Equifax breach is another such great example where Equifax actually had some data points about the vulnerable server, but they could not prioritize these uh, um, security gaps properly because they were using a vulnerability scanner that is 20 years old that uses IT approach and IT um, perspective on risk versus leveraging the attacker's perspective and attacker's decision-making elements. And we'll get there and we'll get to how do you eliminate such uh, um, breach opportunities for attackers and how you can do that today. But just before we do that, let's talk about how these opportunities are being created and why more and more of them are being created. So one, as organizations move to the cloud and become more digital, it means that the number of SaaS instances and web interfaces and VPNs and gateways that your enterprise has is growing exponentially over the last few years. So the more things you have connected to the internet, the exponential, uh, exponentially increased risk you have. And the second element is related, which is human error. With every such system that is now connected to the internet directly versus the intranet, that you may have had 20 years ago when you had just two servers connected to the internet and the rest of the network was internal. By the way, pen testing and vulnerability scanning were designed 20, 25 years ago when you had just two servers connected to the internet. Back then, life was easy. But today, when you have between tens of thousands and millions of servers, devices, web applications, cloud assets connected to the internet, the smallest human error can expose the most sensitive information in your organization. And then more and more enterprises are acquiring more and more smaller companies and even startups. And every such acquisition creates a more diverse and complex technology stack and also some of the IT and security people of these acquired companies leave and create knowledge gaps around what's out there, what needs to be maintained and protected. And so a huge chunk of the breaches out there are related to acquisitions and third party risk. So what can you do about this today to prevent the next breach and especially that majority of the portion of the attacks that really target assets that you may not even know about right now. So first, let's visit what's probably your attack surface protection 
program today. So this is the legacy way of doing it that 95% of the companies use today. And it goes like this in literally 95% of the organizations. So you probably have SIM and EDR and security rating solutions, and maybe even customers who tell you about 500 IPs and URLs that are quote unquote bad and require you to look into it. Then you would need analysts to spend hours on every such IP and URL looking into it, trying to understand, is it really yours? Is it important? And who has access to this server or cloud instance in your organization? Then after you do it, per asset, you would need to spend, these analysts will need to spend between hours and days for every IP and URL running security testing on that asset, trying to understand, is it exploitable? Then based on all of that knowledge they have accumulated, got to manually, they would need to manually compose emails, manually create incidents, manually create tickets. if they want anything to, to, to happen and to eliminate any kind of risk, which is really their job. So what we have here is a process that takes hundreds of hours per month to run in an enterprise using dozens of little tools that are completely siloed and are not scalable and are not efficient. The vast majority of them were either built in the late 90s or just have their approach and data model being designed and built in the 90s. And all it does, these 500 IPs and URLs, 500 makes probably much less than 1% of your attack surface and IT ecosystem. So 99% is not thoroughly tested. And that doesn't even include all of the assets you don't know about. So that's why this process is so broken and why more and more enterprises are shifting from this process to the next generation attack surface protection program and approach. And what we've done at Cycognito over the last few years, which took us a few years to build and tens of millions of dollars to develop, is a SaaS platform that automates this process end to end. So how does that work and what does Cycognito do and how can we help you right now to solve this huge problem? So the first thing we do, just like real attackers, and everything we do, by the way, we do fully externally without any deployment, any configuration need, any inclusion listing need, and any cooperation even needed from the customer's side, which really proves our point. Any technology, especially these legacy technologies that require your input in IP ranges and URLs or deployment or, or inclusion listing means that they have a completely different perspective on your attack surface than what attackers are seeing. And by definition, they cannot solve this huge problem. The 50% of breaches, over 50% of breaches attributed to unknown and unmanaged assets. So how do we do it? The first step is we leverage machine learning capabilities in our graph data model and things like dozens of databases on companies like Standard and Poor and Google Search and millions of websites to map your company's um, organigram, the organization's structure. And we have Fortune 500 customers with literally hundreds of departments, subsidiaries, and acquisitions. And our technology is also able to understand the relationships between these companies. For example, uh, Tasco acquired 
this other company and this other company has this subsidiary and the subsidiary has this cloud instance, for example. So that's something that our SaaS platform is able to understand automatically and at scale and also update it. There are some vendors out there where their analysts will look for some IP ranges manually over weeks or a couple of months. So what it does is it gives you a very partial perspective on your attack surface. And it's also something that costs them up to tens of thousands of dollars on human labor, which means they're not going to do that continuously for you. So all of that labor is going to be put on you. And very quickly, the attack surface perspective will be partial and out of date, which doesn't solve anything. The idea is not to pay vendors for some solutions, but to actually solve this problem. So the next step, after we mapped these hundreds of organizations, and in some cases, millions of applications, devices, servers, cloud instances, and other things that are exposed to the internet, we then leverage classification models and natural language processing technologies to understand what these assets are which is so important both to help you save a lot of time and also for the prioritization process, which we'll talk about in a minute. So these legacy vendors we talked about a few minutes ago, if you think about it for them, there is no different difference whatsoever if this is uh, a mainframe of this bank mainframe asset or the most critical database of this company and an abandoned apache server that has no information on it and is not connected to any other network for the legacy vendors these are all just ip addresses and you have to deal with prioritization even when they bombard you with thousands of alleged issues what we do is actually look at the content and context to help you understand what are the 100 or 200 important assets out of the millions that are connected and exposed to the internet and then and unlike most of our competitors we run active risk assessment continuously to find what important assets are also exploitable and in this area, we do three main things. One, we run vulnerability scanning to find simple yet important vulnerabilities. And since we do it actively, by the way, that's how we have over 90% precision versus 30, 30% uh, percent precision of security rating solutions and other attack surface management solutions that don't run active risk assessment. Two, we orchestrate pen testing tools so that pen testing tools that require today pen testers to feed them with URLs, then run for hours for every specific website, then look at the hundreds of results and find the one true positive because 99% are false positives. So we have orchestrated and automated that whole process so you don't have to do a thing, but we will find zero-day vulnerabilities in some of your web applications and even commercial solutions you're using, as we have found at uh, Cisco and other huge manufacturers. And the third thing we're doing is literally automated pen testing, and we do all of these things at scale. For example, will find cloud assets that sit behind Okta, maybe, but will find that Okta, for example, is misconfigured in this instance, even though Okta is a great product. And so attackers have access to your PII uh, data or your API keys on that kind of sensitive information. Despite the fact you have deployed solid security solutions, they're simply misconfigured in many cases. So after we found and mapped and analyzed the attack surface, 
we understood what these assets are exactly. And we have found which ones are actually exploitable. We run the most advanced prioritization process we know today, where we leverage both the assets business context and importance and true exploitability score to find what are the three or five or 20 really critical attack vectors that lead to critical networks and data in a very exploitable, very easy way for attackers, exactly what attackers are focused on. And the last stage, the last piece of what we do and what our platform does is we have built SOAR automation capabilities baked into our platform so that tickets, incidents, communication, and many other things are automatically happening with all of these contexts, fully automatically based on these hundreds of native integrations we have with probably everything you're using today, like Splunk, ServiceNow, Jira, Zendesk, what have you. So why should you care about this? What can we do for you right now or tomorrow morning? One, we can massively increase your visibility into the assets and IT ecosystem you really have by 30 to 300%, even if you're using security rating solutions or even attack other attack surface management solutions. We're simply the best at this in the world today. Two, and we are super proud of this specifically, we're able to reduce the amount of alleged critical issues you have from the thousands you might be seeing based on various scanners today to just five or 10 or 30. And when you talk to management, it's so much more meaningful to go from 30 to zero rather than go from 3000 to 2000. And it also saves you tons of time. And the proof point to that is that we also shorten the time to remediation of critical issues from months to just a couple of weeks. And sometimes, as you can see here, even significantly less than a couple of weeks. And there, I, I haven't met a single CISO or a single CEO or board member that said he or she doesn't, doesn't want or don't care about reducing MTTR mean time to remediation from months to a couple of weeks. That's what we should all strive to do. And when you leverage the attacker's perspective and actual risk perspective to external risk management, you can actually do that. And since we have vertically integrated all of these pieces of visibility, context, risk assessment, prioritization and SOAR automation, we're able to deliver all of this value. And again, completely externally and automatically without any effort required on your side, while saving you hundreds of hours every month and hundreds of thousands of dollars instead of doing the opposite, which is what happens if you use, well, dozens of siloed tools to try to do that. So it was a pleasure to share with you these insights and perspective today. We would love to talk to you and share more on how Psychognito helps Fortune 100, Fortune 500 and many other organizations to protect their attack surface and prevent real breaches that attackers could leverage right now um, and deal and solve the problem of uh, these majority of the breaches that are attributed to unknown and unmanaged assets. We would love to share with you more. The way uh, POC's work is we can share with you some of your real attack surface data to, to help you understand how attackers see your attack surface right now and help you start be becoming so much more efficient and focused uh, literally in a day or two from now. So if you're interested, feel free to, to reach out. 
go to psychognito.com and register and our great team will love to, to talk to you, learn more and see how we can help. Thank you.